Welcome to Pure Aquas Learning Center. In this series of videos, we will cover cartridge filter replacement. This particular video will go over the replacement of cartridges inside of a stainless steel multi-filter multi housing or an SSC. So the various items shown here are what we recommend for a successful cartridge filter replacement. Starting from the right hand side, we have a PA405 cartridge, which is a two and a half inch by 40 inch five micron cartridge, which will replace what's currently inside. We need about nine of these for this particular model. We have a flathead screwdriver, a clean rag, the Dow 111 lubricant, which is a silicon based lubricant, and the Loctite anti seize. Before we begin the cartridge filter replacement, we'd just like to remind the operators that the system must be completely shut down and depressurized. Of course, it is up to the operator to determine if it is safe to replace these cartridges, and with that, we can begin our cartridge filter replacement. Step one of the cartridge filter replacement will be to open up the air vent valve. This valve will ensure the SSC is not pressurized. After opening the air vent valve, there's two more valves here on the bottom of the SSC. We have a dirty drain and clean drain. Opening these will drain the, the SSC of all water inside, which will make it a little bit easier to, to remove the cartridges. Now, typically these are either plumbed to a local drain or you can have a small bucket here to collect the water. Step two would be loosening these eye nuts and removing the cartridge filter housing lid. So to do so, we would recommend using a flathead screwdriver as some of these eye nuts can get kind of locked up or tight after several days or weeks of operation. So to do so, it's very simple. Of course, you insert the screwdriver in this kind of fashion and loosen that counterclockwise. It takes a little bit of force, but once that's done, it's pretty simple. Once that's kind of loosened, you can use, of course, your fingers or hands just to loosen the rest of this eye nut. This does not be, need to be completely removed and just can be loosened right until the tip of the thread here on the bolt and can be gently kind of brought down here. This same exercise can be carried out for the rest of these eye nuts and we would recommend loosening these in a, I guess, X fashion similar to how a flange is loosened or tightened. After all the eye nuts have been loosened, the next step would be to remove the SSC lid off the top of the filter. Um, so on the larger models, th these can be particularly heavy, so two people might be needed to remove this. But in this particular case, one person is, is enough. And to do so, just simply just remove it and set it aside on the table or bench top that you're working at. Step three involves removing this alignment plate along with the wing nuts and the removal of the cartridges. So to do so, we can use our fingers just to remove these three wing nuts. After the wing nuts have been loosened, it's a little important to pay extra attention that the wing nuts do not fall inside the SSC as that's a common error operators do. Um, so we remove the wing nuts and once that's done, we can remove this alignment plate. After the alignment plate has been removed, removing these springs off the top of the cartridge would be next. Similar to the wing nuts, the operator should pay extra attention that these springs do not fall inside the SSC as they can be difficult to remove. After the springs have been removed, the operator can go ahead and remove the dirty and used cartridges. So to do so, just simply pull them out one by one and dispose of them as required. Once all the cartridges out of the SSC filter have been removed, we recommend the operator inspects the inside of the, the housing to ensure there's no corrosion or any preventative maintenance needed. In addition, it's important to rinse out the SSC filter of any potential debris that have built up over time. So once the SSC has been cleaned and all the cartridges are removed, step four be of course to unwrap the new and unused cartridges and load those inside the SSC filter. So to do so, of course, we would remove any plastic wrapping on the individual cartridges before loading them inside. Once the cartridges have been unwrapped, it's very important to pay attention to the center plate inside this SSC. The center plate is, is, is positioned there to help align inserting the cartridges inside the filter and ensuring they align with the bottom part of the housing so that each cartridge goes in the right position. If the cartridges are not inserted correctly, of course you can have misalignment and cartridges can get kind of torn apart and debris can be pumped downstream. So once the cartridge has been gently aligned, it should be qu quite simple just to insert it inside in the right position as shown here. 
After all the new cartridges have been properly inserted and aligned, the next step would be to, to install these springs back onto the top of the cartridges, one by one, very carefully, to ensure they don't fall inside the housing. Once all the springs have been installed, the next step would be to reinstall the alignment plate back onto the top of the cartridges. Um, it takes a little bit of alignment here to, to make sure that the threaded rods line up and all the springs are right in the correct position. Once the alignment plate has been properly installed, we then go ahead, of course, and install the wing nuts back on one by one. So once the three, three wing nuts on this particular fridge have been installed, a little technique that can be used is pushing down on the alignment plate and tying the wing nuts that way. Before reinstalling the SSC cover, it's recommended the O-ring is taken off, cleaned and re-lubricated. Also, the O-ring seat here is also recommended to be cleaned as well to ensure that the operation is leak-free. Once the O-ring has been cleaned and lubricated, it is now time to reinstall the SSC cover back on top and align it as it was taken off. Before retining these eye nuts and installing them in the correct position they were, we would recommend applying a small amount of anti-seize on the threaded rods here. As in a month's time, when it's time to replace these cartridges again, it would make it a lot easier to remove or loosen up these eye nuts. Once all the eye nuts have been hand tightened, we would recommend going ahead and tightening each eye nut individual in a crisscross fashion with the same screwdriver used to loosen them. Once the SSC cover has been reinstalled and the eye bolt securely tightened, it is now time to close the clean and dirty drain valves and run water again through the SSC filter, but keeping the air vent valve open. This will allow, of course, to purge out any air that that will get displaced with, displaced with water since you know the SSC was completely emptied out during the replacement process. So once that's done, we can go ahead and close the air vent valve. And with that, we have completed the installation or replacement of these five micron cartridges in this SSC filter. One typical question our engineers get from just operators on site is, when is the correct time to replace these cartridges? There's typically two main conditions we look at. One is time and differential pressure. So we'd want to replace these cartridges every 30 days or so, or even before that if, if possible. The second would be differential pressure. If the differential pressure across the pre and post filter gauges is about 10 PSI, that is again a good time to replace these cartridges. This wraps up our Learning Center video and we thank you for watching.